Hello everyone, I'm back. This is a, a free uh, freestyle recording of my thoughts um, about training, um, also my personal life. Uh, today I want to talk about training mainly. Um, so you know that um, you see a lot of trainers, basketball trainers on Instagram or, or uh, YouTube showing you know different combination of movements right so this is very similar to how martial arts was uh, passed down in the old days so you will have a master right basically the master is is how 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 did the, does the master become the master the master actually compete and beat the shit of a lot of people and now he's the master right so then the master obviously develop a, a, a form or a, a style of how he executes certain movement. And that form gets passed down or that movement pattern gets passed down to his disciple. Now, the, the, the question here is, do you actually get the results? by copying all these movement, right? When I was growing up, I was in Beijing in the 80s and uh, well, the people in the, in the US, the most famous uh, uh, movie uh, here about Kung Fu is the Karate Kid, right? When I was a kid, the famous Kung Fu movie is not Karate Kid in China, it was the Shaolin Temple by Jet Li. And that really got me, you know, got me going and interested in martial arts, you know, in exercise, you know, uh, in physical activity altogether. So I wanted to learn martial arts. So I asked my parents, uh, you know, where can I take some of these classes? I want to learn, I want to, I want to be like uh, that Jet Li on TV. Um, so my parents, uh, through some networking, uh, back in the day, this, uh, China uh, hasn't opened its doors. It's not a free market economy, and there's no like uh, classes. You can just pay some money and, and get in. So you need to know some people. So uh, my parents, through some networking, uh, they got me into this. It's called wushu class. Wushu is the uh, the fighting arts. It means fighting arts, literally in. Uh, Chinese and I was lear learning the Changchun which is the, uh, the long, long fist it's called long fist style and the training was very hard uh, so it involves you know a lot of uh, stretching in the beginning hardcore stretching kicking and horse stance right so I talk about it in my ebook as well and after I practiced uh, martial arts and go through went through that training, um, I didn't feel uh, that I have changed much physically, like within myself. I did not. I didn't. I did not feel any difference. And you know, there's 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 bullies in the school. You know, I actually try to fight the bully because I'm like, oh, I know martial arts now. I'm, I'm gonna use, but didn't work because I was I was doing the same I, I, I think I executed the perfect kick but there was no power to back it up so that got me that really got me thinking what's you know what is going on what is what's what's not working right so then <clears throat> I came to the US uh, I saw them you know I started playing basketball also and um, I noticed that the uh, uh, the people that actually copy the form, right? They, 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 you know, there's a lot of trainers that they they try to uh, make you do certain drills that you just copy the form alone. That's very similar to what the Chinese martial arts masters teaching is, basically copy the form. So I did that for a while, and obviously doing games, it didn't really work. It's the same thing because copying the form as we know it does not help 
much. I mean, it helps if you're like really, really uh, uh, on the rudimentary level, it helps a little bit. But as your competition level goes up, copying the form does not help. So the question is really what makes elite athlete or what makes the master master? Then uh, it was through a really a, um, um, I would say a totally accident, right? Totally, total accident, it's accidental discovery. Uh, while my friend who's really good uh, he's really good athletically, but he doesn't he doesn't really practice. <laughs> he's just good, and he can make shots accurately too. And I realized that his feet are different. Uh, from there, I did tons of research, and I think it's through um, some sort of uh, luck. I think it's a lot of luck that I. Um, was able to understand what is going on um, but you know I spoke to uh, my research also involved talking to all the elite athletes that I can get my hands on uh, talking to Cardo Ziani, you know one of the most athletic uh, dunkers in the world back in back when he was younger uh, he's the he's basically the um, pioneer of dunk trolls, you know, and uh, it didn't surprise me that he grew up barefoot, and this mechanism is natural, so when you are, you know, playing sports barefoot when you're growing up, it enhances the expression of the mechanism. So, if you now back to training, right? So if you look at the, the film footage of these uh, trainers, right? They keep on throwing the ball to Carmelo or to LeBron and then LeBron just keep on hitting you five in the rows, 10 in the rows, you know, whatever. This is, this is something everybody can do. What, what I mean is you can replace the trainer with anybody. You throw the ball to an NBA player he's gonna be able to make the ball go in. The, the real question here, right, is how the, the player becomes so talented at throwing that ball into the hoop. Now, as you know that all the knowledges, all the, all the uh, knowledges that we currently know in the training world is based on, pretty much based on the um, based on muscle, right? So they can't, they can't really explain to you why these NBA players are superior. And they believe it's the genetics and talent, right? But talent is such a vague word, you can't really uh, quantify it. But my research actually shows what this talent is in scientific terms. And you can actually understand why I say that the hyperarch mechanism, the hyperarch metamorphosis is the process of how elite athlete become elite athlete as your feet morphs into the hyperarch mode. And I think one of the questions that people, mo uh, most people who are, you know, stand on the sidelines and watching is what is hyperarch really, right? What is hyperarch mode? So I asked you to look at all the elite athletes um, the best of the best, right? I asked you to look at their feet and they all show the same similar patterns. Uh, tendon prominence, um, uh, blisters on top of calluses, on top of the toes, um, the uh, incredibly strong and thick uh, anterior tibial tendon and so forth and so on. So there are, there are visible signs of difference in the foot. Now, most people think, oh, this guy might be, uh, this is just uh, completely random. I'm, 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 uh, what I'm saying is it's not random. And you have to explore, you have to experiment yourself. And look at my videos and try to work on your foot, right? 
But again, if you buy my book or or or、uh, do my training, you got the answer already because I already did the heavy lifting for you. All you have to do is replicate the exact mechanism of what I'm asking you to do, and you'll be good.、Um, the second question is, I think a lot of people have is, you know, how long do I do I does it take to see the results? That could That's really depend. That really depends on you know your your current level of fascia fitness. So if you're, there are four levels that I determine, right? This is really, really, it, it really, these four levels really measures your your glutes dominance and your how connected your whole body whole body is. Regular people without the expression of the hyperarch mechanism, they can have. Very strong segmented muscle parts. They can have that, but when they go through sports and movement, there it's very hard for them to perform at the level of the elite athlete because their whole body is not moving as a holistic unit. Meaning, like all the muscles try to coordinate very.、Uh, Very diff、uh, at a very high level, it, it, it try to coordinate together, right? And it, because it's solely relied on the muscle, there's a lot of taxation on the muscle itself. Instead of, you know, the body goes into isometric stage, and your your、uh, fascia takes over. Your your body is more fascia driven, and everything becomes so effortless. And I'm seeing that with hyperarc fascia training, and. All the, all the athletes I work with, they're doing correctly. They're getting these results. So here is my. It's already 12 minutes. I want to wrap this up real quick.、Uh, here's my vision. I think the biggest, the biggest problem or misconception in 2019, in the century of this year, right? 2019. In in 2019, is that we don't understand. That the elite athletes are same as us, but the difference is is in the in the foot. That is the major difference. We're not talking about genetics, right? Because here's my argument for genetics: if you think that you're genetically inferior, or you have some really bad genes that you're not glutes dominant, well, let me tell you something: glutes dominance can be influenced by hyperarch mechanism expression. Meaning, once your foot start to morph, and you go through this metamorphosis, you will become glutes dominant. So I want you to understand that once your if your glutes are soft today, and you don't feel any glutes, and your foot, and and then when your when your heel is off the ground, you're wobbly. There is a tremendous room for you to improve. Once you get to level four hyperarc fascia fitness level, right? Your glutes are hard, your abs hard. Abs can, can can talk to the glutes directly. Then you are hitting your genetic potential. You are closer to your genetic potential. Whatever you do, it does not matter if you're doing MMA, martial arts,、um, sprinting, running, uh, gymnastics, um, tennis, or basketball. You're going to be a, a superior athlete in your class, in your competition. And that's the vision I see. Is that Because people don't train their foot specifically, they're wasting their time away. Because they're training something else, they're 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 trying to follow the same movement over and over, which doesn't really strengthen the fascia system. So the fascia system, I'll 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 talk about in, the, in another uh, uh, video. It's gonna be it's gonna be more detail. But for now, until next time, remember it's not training. It's metamorphosis.